Well, hello there, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Tony Henderson Mayer's television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur, known as Wise Courtship all over social media because of my book with the three-step system. It will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And this is Check In and Chat. And you know I don't come on unless I have something to chat about. Um, but we've been talking all week long and last week about, um, you know, just various business topics and how it relates to the Hustle Hub uh, Business Club. And I was hoping and praying that um, each and every one of you would be able to tune into these broadcasts and learn from them and also join us over there at the Hustle Hub Business Club. So um, without further ado, I do want to introduce um, Judy St. Pierre. Uh, she is an author, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, that too as well. Um, but just know that you can get the book on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. Um, she is basically uh, uh, written about grief, and we'll talk a little bit about that too as well. But we're, main topic today we're talking about is doing it afraid, doing it afraid. And we're just going to talk a little bit about that. And so without further ado, I want to go ahead and add her on to this broadcast. Good to see you, Judy. Good morning, Tony. Good to Good see you too. Good morning to you. I know you're you're hailing in from California. And so it's so good to see you on today. So we want to talk a little bit about um doing it afraid. You know, um we talked about business topics all week long. Um but very often um, it's hard for people to get started because there's a certain amount of fear, you know? Um, but what Definitely. I've admired about you is that the things that you've been learning, the learning curve has been very steep. I mean, you've had to learn a lot and yet um, I would suspect that you were afraid. You have to let me know whether you were afraid, but whatever the case, you still did it anyway. Can you talk yeah, about that? Does. Well, as far as um, writing my book, mm -hmm. I have been a widow for about 50 years, and I've always wanted to help to write a book to help other people, but I was too scared to do it, very scared. But then after meeting Tony and other people in the group, they helped me realize I could do it and just really encouraged me to believe in myself. And that's one thing I really like about the, the club we're talking about because other people within the group, are encouraging along that line yeah absolutely and I, I do want to to apologize for those who are tuning in uh, live we got a little glitches going on on my side here um <laughs> but I think the the content is coming in very clear and if you're also uh, uh listening via the check-in and chat podcast thank you so much for that and if you want to listen to it, you can listen to it. Go to anger.fm or any place that you listen to podcasts. We are there. Check in and chat. So um, I love what you said about, um, you know, about how you were motivated to believe in yourself, because I believe that a lot of people who are afraid to do whatever it's a lack of belief in, in themselves, you know, that they can do it. Um, that they have the tools necessary to do it. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you can do everything by yourself. How important was it um, that you had, uh, well, you talked about me have having me to support you or anyone else that may have supported you along the way? Oh, it's very important to have support. I think going back a little bit, I think lots of us grow up feeling afraid that we can't do anything because of our upbringing. And just my stepfather used to tell me every day that you'll never amount to anything. Well, I, I believed it. But I, with, with help from you and different people God's brought into my life, I've realized that I can do it. And the Hustle Club has helped me realize even more so because I gave me a chance to deal with other people, share with them why I didn't think I could do it, and having their back saying, Judy, you can do it. It takes slow steps to get to that point, but... So people at church were really helpful to me. I had a counselor that after Jerry died that was very encouraging. So it's all a combination of different people that God brought into my life. Yeah, absolutely. And and we're definitely going to uh, get delve into a little bit about the book um, in a few. 
Um, but I just know that there's someone who's listening that's going to really be helped by this broadcast. I mean, I just, you know, I know that sometimes people admire, and rightfully so, they admire people who achieve all of these things, and, and that's wonderful. But I tend to admire people who um, achieve in spite of, you know, it, it's so many things that people can use as excuses. You know, I'm a woman, I'm older, I'm, you know, I don't have any money or I don't know how to do it or what have you. Um, talk about the fact that it took you about 30 years. Um, you mentioned this on the other broadcast and I was just <laughs> floored about the length of time, but yet when you connect it with the right person, how th things changed around for you very quickly. Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, one thing I want to bring up before I forget, as a Christian, um, the one verse God brought into my life was Jeremiah 29, 11, which is, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Yes. Plans for, to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. And that has been my life verse. I think sometimes as a Christian, God uses things in our life to really bring us to him. Mm -hmm. A quick example of that, um, there was one night, my kids were like one and two, and I was ready to take my life. I had already called someone to come over and find my kids. And I had my Bible, and I said, okay, you prove to me you, you exist or I'm gone. I opened up to Psalms 14, 1 that says, the fool has sent his heart, there is no God. Wow. And then I said, okay, now that you've proven to me you exist, give me a reason for going on. And I opened up to Jeremiah 29, 11. So that's been, every time I go through a hard time, God brings that verse back to my life. And I'm laughing because God is so faithful. He will do things like that. I just love this. I'm like, if you're watching, whether you're watching live or on the replay, make sure you share this broadcast. That testimony alone has touched my heart greatly. Um, and so I, I want to encourage you that if you're listening and you're trying to start your own business, your ministry, your products, your service, write your books, I want to encourage you to, to do that and to do it afraid, you know, uh, even though you may have some trepidations go forward because, uh, I think Judy, I think you are such a prime example. Uh, you are a person who, I think your manuscript was written. Wasn't that it? Your manuscript was written before it became tight and then you had to get it tight and all of that to move forward and mm -hmm. technology is not necessarily your thing. So there were a lot of barriers uh, that you were facing, but it didn't stop you. Can you talk about some of the, maybe some of the barriers I don't even, I'm not aware of. Can you discuss some of those? Okay. Um, some of the barriers were of course, um, it seemed whenever I started to write, it seemed like someone would call me on the phone. And I think that was Satan's way of kind of distracting me. So mm -hmm. I had to just go into my office, close the door. And well, my cat did so and my roommate knew I was working. But it's just I constantly, that verse, I still have, I can't do it all the time. And I have to go back to my mind and say, okay, Judy, who's in control of you? God, you know I am. You can do it. Let's stop right there. Please don't lose that thought that you said, but okay. you said something really, really good. You said that thought still comes back to you every now and then. And I think that's so important for people to realize is that um, just because you do it afraid uh, or just because you get something done does not mean that some, some of the things that we think about ourselves or things people told us about ourselves, that does not mean it doesn't crop back up but it does mean you swat it back down with the word and, and, you know, you just step out and still do it afraid anyway. I didn't want to interrupt you, but that was so good. I had to bring that point out. So go <laughs> forward. <laughs> okay. Where was I? Anyway, even though that still comes to me, I have to stop and think that is from God. And then I had to go back to the word. And even though I have memorized that, I still go back and read it. And remember that God created me for a purpose. And my purpose yes. wasn't to lose my husband, but as a result of it, to help other people. Absolutely. And um, the one thing from writing my book, if this is one person read it and she was a new widow and was about to take her life. And she said, reading my book gave her um, the courage to know she could go on. And we actually kept in contact. 
So it saved someone's life. And that is so, so neat to see that what God's allowed me to go through to help her. And I just want to help other people realize, yes, you do grief, but God knows that God knows how you're feeling. So just be honest with him about it. It's good to see you, uh, Dr. Annette West. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm telling you the testimonies and the, the nuggets that Judy is dropping in this broadcast is amazing. And I hope you guys are really catching on what she is saying and you're being encouraged by it. And um, certainly for you to write a book about grief, okay, meant that you, you've you gone through some, some things yourself. Do you mind sharing um, some of the things that you have have had to go through um as you wrote this book and, and and the premise in which you wrote the book what i've had to go through a lot of it we seen constantly the devil trying to get to me you can't do it you can't do it and that was a common theme throughout my whole writing of this book you know I, it took me about seven months to write this but i just had to keep going back to god i i may feel feel this way but god's word says this and on god's word i can't go how on i feel i have to go on what i know because god's word says it and i've had i had a lot even one of my pastors tell me that he didn't think i should he read the book and said it was okay but nothing would become of it that god would not be using me yeah. and that you know i even want I, I asked please stop right there for i'm a sorry minute. Because I want, I mean, okay, I'm you, sorry. you're saying such good things. That's the only reason why I'm stopping you, because you are saying some okay. amazing things. I want people to hear that, that, you know, one of her pastors said, it, you know, the feedback wasn't good. It's, it's basically said it's okay, but it will never go anywhere. And you have had, you have got to, for those who are watching, even though people say that they love God and whatnot, they can misstep. They can misfire. They can say things that are not. Uh, true and you have to rely on the word that God has given you and this is why when we say you're going to do it afraid uh, even if you don't have anyone supporting you even if someone you trust and look up to says well yeah, yeah I remember when I wrote wise courtship I had a spiritual leader read it and laugh and had no idea that later the book would go worldwide, that the book would um, win so many awards, help so many people. And of course, that's what we care about. It's about the people's lives that we touch. So Judy, you are a widow, correct? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Tell us about that journey, if you don't mind, and how it um, you know, prepared you for, for writing this book. Wow. <laughs> when my husband died, our kids were, my son was five months old and my daughter was 18 months old. Wow. So, and I'll be honest with you, even at the time of his death, I did not want to live. And I would have taken my own life if I didn't have my kids. Mm -hmm. I just kept thinking, I can't do that to my kids. You know, their dad died and then their mom, I'm sorry, <laughs> and then their mom was taking their life. I stayed around for them. Mm -hmm. You know, I stayed around for them, and I'm so glad I did. You know, and it, it was a struggle raising my kids because I did not have a lot of hope. I did not. I mean, I had hope, but I did not have a lot of help. But now, um, my son, my actually, real quickly, pray for my son. He's going through cancer. He lives in Texas, and my daughter and her husband live in um, New York. And I have a granddaughter that was born six days ago, and my Grandson will be four in February. So God has really blessed me with yes, them. He really has. And how many years but it was have a you struggle. been a widow? That's been a long time. Well, my husband died in 80, 84. So yes, wow. quite a while. <laughs> and yes, I've never remarried. I have, I've had a chance to remarry once, but he wasn't the type of person. God was not person in his life. So I you know, your, said no. Your story is very <laughs> similar uh, to my mother. My mother uh, became a widow in 1985. She was 44 years old and she never remarried. Mm -hmm. And when I saw, I was 19. And when I saw the journey, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Um, but it became a ministry for her as well. And um, I see that you have a heart for those who are grieving. And so for those who don't know the name of the book, 
The name of the book is Finding Hope in the Mist of Grief uh, by Judy St. I'm going to put uh, I'm going to uh, put her name back up so you can get her name by Judy St. Pierre. I believe it's going to bless you. I've read it myself. It's amazing. I believe it's going to help you. Um, and so I think everyone should get it. I know that you focused on spouses. I know that you'll probably be writing more, but I think everyone will benefit from this. Um, and so, um, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit more, um, about doing it afraid, because I think that's so important. I think people, you know, someone said, I I think it was a pastor who said this when he was preaching about, about how the graveyard is full of potential unrealized potential books that have never been written songs that have never been sung, you know, all of those types of things. If you were to take the time to encourage someone who's listening to this or who's watching this broadcast, what would you say to them about, um, doing it afraid? I would say, don't listen to your mind, but listen to your heart. Listen to what, God wants to. You, God's giving you this dream for a purpose, and He His goal is not only to bless you, but to bless other people through it. And I'd say, yes, you're afraid. I'm even nervous about talking to you guys right now, but <laughs> I'm doing it. Just, just I follow your heart, and your your heart desires come from God, and He'll be with you through it all. So. You know, I feel nervous today, but God, I'm going to do what you told me to do because I'm obedient to you. And I know that I'm going to help other people with your help. Absolutely. And you've done that already. Dr. Annette West says, yes, one's plan, one's pain, I'm sorry, and hurt can easily lead them to support others going through the same things. And, you know, that's, we don't want these things to happen to us, um, but we live this life and because of the life that we live, we will have troubles. We may have trials and tribulations, but when you are able to get to a point where you can turn around and help someone else, what a blessing. So, you know, Dr. Annette West came in just in time because she is a member of the hustle hub and here she is supporting. We've had, we've had always had someone from the hustle hub at every broadcast support. Um, Tell me um, your feelings on the Hustle Hub and the support and the camaraderie and all of that. Tell me your thoughts, Judy, on the Hustle Hub. Thank you for saying Judy. I wasn't sure which one you were talking to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who's she going to talk to? Um, I'm, like I mentioned before, I'm fairly new to this, but I really like the Hustle Club because um, we can learn from each other, and I think that's important. You know, like when I'm afraid to do something, I can go into the meeting when all four, when everyone from the club meet and just say, hey, I'm feeling like I can't do this or I can't do that. I want to do this with my book. And like the teams encouraged me last time to start blogging. So that's something I've been thinking of. And I've done it once and I want to continue it. So for me, it's just like little steps <laughs> because I know God will bring me to where he wants me to be. You know, and I'm glad you said little steps because it doesn't have to be giant leaps. You know, you don't have to get on top of Mount Everest overnight. You know, not to, to tackle Mount Everest takes a step at a time. And so I think that's important. I'm glad you brought that up because someone would maybe watching and say, you know, I can never do that, you know, and you talked about 30 years before you got the book done. When Once you got in alignment with God, you know, it took much right. shorter. And once you got up under the direction of who he sent, um, then it, it happened much quicker. But um, the thing is, is that things happen one step at a time. College is not the degree. College is one class at a time. And so uh, if you're watching and you're listening to this, I hope that you're being um, encouraged and empowered by Judy's journey. Um, let's talk about the, um, have you got a chance to be part of the mastermind sessions? One. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I asked this too, because, um, when you join the hustle hub guys, make sure that when you join, try to take advantage of all that we have to offer. Um, because sometimes it's hard for people to join. And then once some people join, it's hard for them to come in and participate, but we are a loving uh, people with our arms open wide. So tell me what, what are your thoughts about the mastermind sessions? Well, it's really, you 
I forget what we talked about, the one I went to, but what you taught on was very challenging and very insightful. And then it was neat for all of us to share our opinion and our insight on it. And from that, we could um, just really talk about what we thought about the subject that was in the given time period. Absolutely. And Dr. Annette West says, yes, join the Hustle Hub. You will be empowered, enriched, inspired, stretched, and so much more. And we thank you so much for that. And she has been like our top participator for several months now, actually, for several months. And so we really appreciate you. And I believe you get what you get out of it, what you put in. Um, you know, sometimes it's we, so expensive, we want to... money. Say that I'm again, kidding. Judy. I said so expensive. I was keen. I said, but it's so expensive, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? For nineteen ninety five a month or what less than sixty seven cents a day, you're part of the hustle hub. Um, you know, it's it's not expensive at all. We joke about it, of course. And uh but I mean it's the value is worth it. Um what do you think you would pay? Um and Judy, you can take a guess at this if you like. I mean, we could play a game here. What do you think you would pay? if you wanted to take a class uh, such like a mastermind class and learn some of the things that you've learned and then mm -hmm. have Q&A and different things afterwards, how much do you think that might cost you? I would think in the minimum of like a thousand, fifteen hundred maybe. Yeah. I, you know, it really depends on what you're, what you're trying to get. And if it's in the area of business, you are going to pay the price. And very often, even in my publishing company, when people talk about, Oh, well, it's going to cost this. I say, you know what? Go shop around. I don't even fight with just go shop around. And when they finish shopping around, they come back and say, oh, my goodness, <laughs> that is valuable. Uh, Dr. Netwest says, I'm in it. So going to get the most from it. Exactly. Yeah. If you're going to pay your 1995, get the most out of it. And also know that um, it may not stay that way forever for those who are in it will. Mm -hmm. um, but also that the value uh, is, is you just can't beat the value at all. Uh, Dr. Net West says she's going to guess. She says it's a thousand dollars up for a master class of the places. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. A uh, mentorship, the mentorship you receive. Um, now I was uh, Les Brown's mentee, but I've seen people uh, be mentees of um, very popular people because uh, Les Brown and I talked about this, where they were charging people thirty-seven thousand dollars just to sit up under them and learn. You know, and I mean, like, it's like 37,000. Are you serious? <laughs> I'll watch you on TV and learn. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, it's just extraordinary uh, what people uh, charge for these things. So I'm going to give you an opportunity uh, first to say anything else that you want to say about the Hustle Hub, because our time is wrapping up. Is there anything else that you might want to um, add that we didn't we didn't say about the Hustle Hub? Judy, I'm sorry. For me, I think it, okay, um, just quickly, for me, I would, because you also develop, uh, um, like, a friendship within the group. Yeah. Which is kind of neat. You really, we really care for each other and how we're doing in our personal lives and also in our business lives. And I think that's really neat to have that, that I don't know, network. Yeah, and, you know, I, I just really, uh, once again, applaud you, Judy, because, you know, I sometimes take approaches of a mother eaglet when I'm teaching or working with anyone. And that is, I'm going to teach and I'm going to, you know, show, but then at some point I'm going to kick you out because you got to learn how to fly some kind of way. <laughs> Sometimes I pull the net from up under you and that's only, and I watch and it looks like you're going to fall. I'm going to swoop up under you and, and get you back up to safety and then kick you out the nets again. <laughs> but I say with all of the people who are part of the hustle hub are just extraordinary people well we're down to a few minutes judy uh is there something that you want to make sure that the listeners know about what you have to offer um or maybe about your book is there anything that you want them to know about i would just encourage you to buy it and share it with other people my goal is not to make money from it my goal is just to help other people you know to minister to them to know that um people are not going to understand your grief god does but people People say things to like the Romans 8, 28, all things to, together for good to those who love God. Yes, that that is true. But it's not an appropriate verse to use yeah. with someone who just lost a loved one. So just 
Give it to other people that are grieving. It will help them understand that God does not have a time label, time frame on grief. It's will be there with you as long as it takes. And I even now have birthdays, anniversaries. Those days used to be really hard. They I can come and go now, but God will be with you through the years whenever you need him. Grief is not on that limit. Yeah, absolutely. And Dr. Annette West is going to check you because you know I was about to check her too. She says, uh, Dr. Annette West says, even if your goal is not to make money, Judy, I pray for financial increase so you will have the resources to share with others. And as we teach in the Hustle Hub, it's okay in ministry to have have money because you're going to need that to go out to minister to people. You're going to need that to pay your way to get to other cities or whatever you need to do. And so we are praying for financial increase in that area for you. So her book is Finding Hope in the Mist of Grief. You can get it at Amazon, Barnes and Nobles or any place books are sold. If you don't see it, ask the manager for um, for finding hope in the mist of grief. And I'm trying to, sorry, Dr. Annette West. Let me see, I put her comment back up here, but I want to put uh, Judy's name up there. Judy St. Pierre, can make sure you ask. Can I post it? May I show a picture of my old book so they yeah. can mm -hmm. see the name of it? This is that's the old one. We we really need to do a share. I forgot to. Um, I and forgot you probably to, can't see this, can you? I forgot to attach the new book. The new book is oh, um is yeah, black and uh, gold. Um, yeah, and I'm going to put it on the for those who follow us at Wise uh, uh, Word Therapy Publishing on uh, Facebook. I will also be tweeting it out and I'll probably put it on my private page too as well. I want to show you a before and after of the book. I'm telling you, you're going to really love it and you're going to be so proud of uh, what Judy has done. Let me just also say before Judy goes, I want to encourage you if you are grieving to get the book, but I also want to encourage you that if you minister to people who are grieving in any way, I want you to get the book to read for yourself and to also share with someone else because it's so because it's so important that we approach um those who are grieving in the right way and to be a comfort and to help because uh very often as Judy has already articulated they uh many don't want to live any longer they have thoughts of suicide or they're very depressed or what have you and we want to put our loving arms around them so Judy thank you so much for this interview you did amazing uh we thank you so much for being part of the Hustle Hub and um, I'm going to say goodbye to you right now, lady, but I will see you um, soon. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. So we want to thank Judy for being with us. And um, I hope that what she has said and what she has contributed to the conversation that you will um, be consider being part of the Hustle Hub. Uh, not because, like she said, you know, we're just not trying to just gather people for the sake of gathering people, but we're trying to gather people who want to move ahead in their uh, products, their services, their ministries, their businesses. And listen, why struggle alone? We talked about that. Why uh, work alone when you can work with a team? Um, you can get learn business strategies and all of those things to help propel you forward. Well, I've got to go, but I can be reached on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And, um, well, I guess this ends uh, the segment of check in and chat. And I'll see you again when I'm ready to check in and chat. Take care. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell. Click it for me so that you will know anytime I upload a new video.